Hello everyone and welcome back for another podcast. So in today's podcast I'm going to be talking about planes. For those of you that are watching you shall be able to see quite a lot of planes in front of us. This is only some of my planes, not all of my planes. Um, there is still some um, stashed away at my mother's house. So this kind of um, stemmed from a video I did the other day. Um, I posted a video pretty much all about saws, um, you know, kind of the pros and cons about them. Uh, that is available on my YouTube channel um, if you want to go and check it out. Um, I discussed like uh, the traditional um, Western style saws, um, the Japanese saws and some frame saws as well. Um, kind of give me, you know, my 10 cents if you will. Um, and overall what I thought was the best saw for me personally so as I said that's kind of um, brought on today's podcast so just before I get on with that I just wanted to mention that um, I was scrolling about um, Instagram um, I think it was yesterday or may, might have been the day before and there was a post by the Lost Art Press uh, Chris Schwartz and Chris um, is kindly um, given away free digital copies of the Atticus Design book. So I've actually got the um, the physical copy, as you can see. So this is a really good book. Um, I've built numerous projects out of it. I keep on revisiting it. You know, it's 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 not something that I'm kind of going to get rid of or give to somebody. I'm always going to be referring back to it. There's a lot of good information in it. Uh, some of the projects are really good in it. Um, if you can, I would recommend you get a physical copy of it. Um, if not, there's obviously a free um, download. Um, just head over to the website, um, Lost Art Press, and you should be able to download it. I am going to do it myself because it is um, the revised version, so it's got extra projects in it, where I think this might have been the second edition, first or second edition, I can't quite remember. So um, it is missing some updates, some projects, so I'm probably going to download it myself. So what have I been up to? I have been building um, this table. You should be able to see this table in front of us, or, or what's going to be a table. So... Um, this is probably going to be a shaker style. Um, somebody was asking us the other day on Instagram, is it like a shaker style table? It's probably going to end up like that, um, although I'm not too sure. It really just depends on the style of um, the legs and, and whatever else. It is going to have a draw on it. Um, I'm really looking forward to, um, to getting it finished. So this is beach. Um, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with the beach. I, I, I'm not a fan of just the look of beach. Um, you know the color of it. It's a bit too. Um, it's 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 a bit too red for me. If if that makes sense. So if anyone's got any suggestions, you know, um, you know, to get like a nice color to it. Back to the planes. So as you can see, I've got a number of planes. Um, I'm just going to go over some of the pros and cons with them. Um, the ones I like, the ones I dislike, the ones I don't use. So first up is a number five um, jack plane. Um, this is a Kushang. Um, I very rarely use it, although I have been using it on the beach. This steamed beach was very, very tough. Um, my number four struggled with it and my kind of plane struggled with it and those two guys are like beveled down where this is a bevel up so I kind of dawned on is that I did have one of these and um, obviously give it a sharp one and you know it was it was um, a lot different um, there was quite a lot of um, resistance when I was using the number four um, my, Bailey, my Bailey style pattern um, beveled down and the kind of um, there was quite a lot of resistance. There was still resistance using the bevel up, uh, but uh, you know it, it made a it made a big uh, difference. Um, you know, kind of saved me. Uh, you know, you know, me, me effort was a lot less. So I got this from Workshop Heaven. Um, I can't remember the price of it. Um, I do actually like the look of it. It looks quite modern. It looks like kind of aerodynamic to me. <laughs> Obviously, it's just a plane, but um, it has that look about it to me. 
I'm not sure the handles, I'm not sure the handles are, are rosewood perhaps, um, beautiful handles. Um, the handle, um, it's it's very comfortable, I like, I like the way it fits. Um, this also has um, a movable mouth, so basically the front knob unscrews, um, it's got a little lever at the front here and you can open and close the mouth um, should you need to. Um, what I don't like about it is that the little um, blade adjuster that will send the blade out or retract the blade, um, that's also the lateral adjuster. So the lateral adjuster, for anyone that doesn't know, is the left to right um, adjustment of the blade to the workpiece. Um, obviously this has got to be set so you're not taking like big gouges out one corner of the workpiece. So. This is this is fiddly. Um, I don't like setting the lateral adjustment. Um, using this, um, I find it like very very fiddly. So what I was doing was actually just um, unscrewing the the cap and just moving it with my fingers ever so slightly. Um, you can't really get a hammer in there. Um, and as I say, even to get your fingers in to to retract the blade or push the blade forward, it can be a bit fiddly. I personally think um, this, the, the thumb screw or the finger screw here should have been back maybe another maybe another 10 millimeters would have made all the difference but obviously I'm guessing there's probably some sort of um, some sort of reason there uh, the designs like that um, who knows this is another um, jack plane a number five so for anyone that's wondering the name jack plane where does it come from? It's kind of the same sort of thing as um, jack of all trades. So a jack of all trades will be able to do like a little bit of everything, you know, a little bit of joinery, a little bit of sparking, um, plastering, you know, a little bit of painting, something like that. Where and that's kind of where this guy gets its name from because you can do quite a lot with this. Use it to round over. Use it to create chamfers. Use this to. Um, straighten the edge of boards ready for glue up um you know typically something like that was done with a number i don't know um, a number six number seven number eight something like that um obviously you can use this to thickness a board you know so it's it's a good all-rounder um i got this on the flea market i'm sure it was something silly like um or maybe like 12 pounds something like that this was a really good buy i did replace the blade and i did replace um the chip breaker so i've actually done this with um, my number four as well so the aftermarket um blades um and i'll argue about this my personal experience is that um because this is thicker material this it tends to be less chatter and that's the same with the um chip break as well so i feel you get like a bit you get a better solid blade and while you're taking it through um, the workpiece you know if there should be some awkward grain you're less likely to get chatter and if you do get chatter it's going to be less um i really don't rate the the traditional um plain blades that come with the plane um i don't think they're up to much obviously you know i have used them and i personally think it's worth going out and buying so these are hock blades um there is a couple of lads i think is it ray eels um that's a that's an english tool maker um i have had a couple of his blades they're pretty good as well so the lateral adjustment on these guys is the is a is a lever here so I'm going to try and show you on camera as I pull it one way the blade should move and the other side so obviously the for me these are one of the easiest planes to set and um, so easy to set them obviously you've got a lot of um, control with um, with the lateral lever um, I absolutely love these and to advance and retract your blades obviously you've got the screw here um, I quite like them um you know there's a there's enough room for you to get your finger and thumb and i usually use you know me two my middle finger and my thumb it just seems pretty natural to us you know um but yeah it's good playing um definitely recommend one 
So the number four is pretty much a shorter version of this. Um, this is more geared for smoothing, so basically, um, you know, like a, like a tabletop, once a tabletop's near enough flat, you get this guy on it and you get a nice glass finish with it, um, providing you've, you've got a nice sharp blade. Um, same sort of adjustments, everything's the same, and obviously, as I mentioned, I did get um, an aftermarket uh, blade for this. So these, these two, I'm not sure of the age of them, I do know they're older than me and I'm 43 this this year. So, you know, they have held up pretty well. Um, I believe the history of this one, this was a guy who worked down in the shipyards, um, Southampton way, somewhere down there. Um, I got this from eBay. This is really good. Um, this is probably my favourite plane, really like it. So... Another thing is that it's actually got a corrugated bottom um, and all this is for is to reduce friction so obviously if there's less material on the sole there's less area for um, friction to be created. Um, I personally think it works, I've heard a few people say it's like just a bit of a gimmick but um, I personally think it works, it, it feels less less like there's less friction when I use it um, as I said one of my favorite planes so I've got a couple of number threes here um, I never ever use them um, so this is Bailey pattern number three um, everything pretty much is the same as the four and the five apart from it being shorter than the five so with the with the number three it is it is slightly um it is slightly shorter in width um it's pretty much the same size in length as i said i don't really um tend, tend to use the number threes um I, I don't really see a lot of people using them like even on social media and stuff so uh, i don't i don't know my it's i think it's just like one of those two um add to your collection um, as I said I, I really don't use it this is also number three um, pretty much everything's the same you've got the lateral adjustments you've got you've got the um, blade um, advance and retract system the system's exactly the same um, but this is actually um, a bedrock plane bedrock pattern um, you can see the difference um, at the pro the profile of the body um so this guy um I, I bought it i didn't use it a great deal it's very very heavy i'm not a fan of heavy um heavy blade uh, sorry heavy planes really not a fan of them um that's a lot lighter um even me number four me number four is like a lot lighter than this number three I got this from Workshop Heaven. This is um, uh, another Kushang, Kushung, however you pronounce it. I'm probably butchering that. Um, very well made. Um, the machining's lovely on it. Um, I love the handles on it. I think the handles might be a rosewood, I think. Um, same as this guy here. Um, I personally wouldn't recommend getting a number three um, unless you've got specific need for it. Off the top of my head, I kind of think of anything you would need a number three for that a number that a number four wouldn't deal with. Um, obviously, the thing the thing with a number four, um, I've used this for absolutely everything. Well before I got a number five, I was using a number four to join boards. Um, basically, using the number four and using a one meter um, straight edge. This straight edge, as it happens, um, basically playing in and then every so often just putting the straight edge on and seeing whether there's any dips or, or high spots and, and playing accordingly. So I've done that for quite a number of years to the point where I got quite proficient with it. Even today, even with us having um, the two jack planes, um, if this guy is sharp, you know, maybe I've just freshly sharpened it for some reason. Um, if it's sharp and I've got some jointing to do, I'll just use this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even bother like swapping the blades out. It just wouldn't come into my mind. I just grab this, 
grab the one meter um, straight edge and, and away I would go. Um, so, uh, you know, this, I'm, I'm kind of veering off, veering off the number three here a little bit, but this guy, um, same again, I've used this for absolutely everything, round and over, chamfer and you name it. Um, as I said, this is my favorite plane, most likely. This is another Quishang. Um, again, I got this from Workshop Heaven. And same as the number three, it has got a bit of weight to it, but that is forgivable. Um, well machined. Um, same again, it has the the blade advance and retract system, um, same as that, although this is a bit more predominant, this is a lot easier to get. Um, same that the blade is a lot thicker in these, and it's also a bevel up. Um, this also has um, the movable mouth, so you can make the mouth um, like smaller or bigger. Um, same sort of system as the number, um, the number five for adjustment. <clears throat> The top, um, the cap, um, this kind of fits on with like a bit of a screw. Um, I'm not overly fond of it. Um, it's it can be a bit fiddly sometimes, um, but I'm I'm not too fond of that. So the lateral adjustment on this, it doesn't have lateral adjustment. It, you pretty much just use, um, or at least I just use my fingers and you know kind of use my thumb. So. This would be a good plane for me. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying it's not a good plane. Um, just for me, more to do with genetics, is that um, this plane is too big for my hand, unfortunately. Because I actually do like this, and I and I do use it occasionally. Um, but you know, it would just be nice to use it with one hand. And the thing, the thing with that, is that if I want to make this nice and comfortable the top of the the top of the the cap here wants to be in the center of my palm so as i as i close and grasp the side here as you can see well you should be able to see on the camera that my my first finger is like nearly like three quarters of an inch away from the center of um the the knob at the front, which obviously you're supposed to make contact and it helps obviously to, you know, to do everything. So I'm, I'm holding it like this and there's a lot, of, I can feel a lot of strain, uh, a lot of strain at the, you know, j just behind me watch here. So compared to there, I'm stretching now, but there's a little bit less, although I still can feel it. But I think if my hands were a little bit bigger, um, I think I would be using this um, a lot more. Um, as I said, it is a good um, plane. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd still buy it most likely, um, even even if I knew before I bought it that it wasn't going to be um, big enough for me hand. But that's probably my only gripe with it. Um, obviously, I just I just have to use it with two hands most of the time. This is um, a rebate plane. Um, obviously, as you can see. Um, it's basically got um, the blade goes all the way through and there's an actual full cuts that goes all the way through um, the sole and um, you can see it more out the sides here yeah, it's got like you know plenty of room for the blade and shavings to come out of this is actually pretty good um, I really liked this <laughs> until I dropped it and broke um, the the knob at the front off um, I think I'm, I think I knocked it off um, one of the benches i think um, and obviously it's just landed um really poorly and um the front knob is uh, snapped off i probably could get um, a replacement for this um i'm not sure how difficult it would be to get um that bolt out it's this is not something i've ever done or you know i don't really fancy drilling anything out um i might be able to i don't know there might be some sort of a tap i might be able to get into there so um, these are pretty quick at creating a rebate. The only thing you have to watch with these is that when, you, when you're applying pressure, at least I do anyway, I've got a tendency to kind of um, lean, the, lean the plane like towards myself, which is puts, puts it on a, on a slope. So 
this would actually be pretty good to make um, you know a raised like a raised panel the field the bevel on it um, it would be pretty good for that um, but when you're creating rebates with this you do have to be careful that like you don't obviously start creating a bevel but yeah I do like it um, it's actually been a while since I've used it this is a Lee Nielsen shoulder plane. This is the only Lee Nielsen um, bit of kit I own because it cost an absolute fortune. Um, beautiful, um, beautiful bit of kits. So how this works is that um, you've got the handle section here. There's a pivot point here and there is a thumb screw here. When you tighten the thumb screw, um, it pushes uh, the, pit, the, the pivot point actually pushes down on the foot here, which um, traps the blade in place. Um, got same again, it's got the, the thumb screw at the back to um, advance or retract um, your blade. So I think I struck lucky when I bought this one. Um, it's just right um, for the size of my hand. I like the way it handles on the material and kind of when I bought it I didn't I didn't like I didn't give it a full thought you know to say well if I buy this size will it be good enough for my you know my work what I do the typical size tenants I could things like that will it be good enough for that I kind of just like ooh shiny and I bought it <laughs> well, I bought I actually bought this at um uh, the northeast of England woodworking show um, a few years ago. I think it might have been 2019 when I got this actually. <laughs> but as it turns out, it's actually perfect for the things that, like you know the shoulders are. I tend to cut the mortise and tenon joints are cut. It's just a nice size. I mean, only only the other day I used it um, to clean up the shoulders on this um, on this table that I'm making. So, I mean, do you need one? Uh, probably not. Um, it's one of those tools where you don't need it, but it's very handy. Um, it comes in very handy when you when you do need it. This is an apron plane. Um, this is a this is a Luban. I think this is kind of like the same sort of company as um, the Kushang. This is a really nice plane. Um, I don't know if this is taken from like a Lee Nielsen design. I'm not overly sure. I don't know the history behind this design. I think the design's quite well. Um, as you can see, the cap at the top, it's actually raised quite a bit. Um, there's plenty of room to, you know, access the, the screw that actually tightens the, or fixes the blade in place. This um, blade adjuster, it's, it protrudes a lot. Excellent to adjust the blade. Um, and most importantly with this guy, um, it fits it fits in my hand and I can use this one-handed. Um, ironically, <laughs> ironically though, um, the blade itself, um, it has a nick in it and I cannot get rid of that nick. Um, every time I try, I grind it down, I resharpen it, and that nick just always comes back. Um, so I'm not sure if it's if it's like a weakness in the steel or there's some sort of fault in the steel when it was made in the factory. I'm not overly sure. Um, if anyone knows why that keeps on happening, um, leave a comment. I'd, I'd be uh, most interested to know. As I said, I've I've ground I've ground it down and resharpen it again which is as far as i'm aware that's what you're supposed to do make sure you get the nick out of it by grinding it then resharpen it again uh, but as i said it, it just keeps on coming back which is a shame um you know i possibly should just go out and uh, buy a new uh, new blade because as i said this this is um this is the only like kind of block plane but it's not a block plane i think it's an apron plane um i think that's the correct terminology for it but this is the only sort of plane where I can use one handed um, you know and it isn't an issue so this is um, it's little brother this is absolutely awesome I'm sure I paid about £50 for this this is saying this is a Luban um, part of the Kushang family it's absolutely gorgeous um, 
I use this all of the time. Any sort of, um, you know, if I'm taking the corners off every, anything, arises, um, taking, um, you know, making chamfers, anything like that, um, small pieces, you know, like maybe three, four inches, um, and I've got to um, tidy up the end plane. I reach this guy straight away, um, very handy. Um, this is probably my second most favourites. Um, it does actually need a bit of a sharpen now. Um, it's been neglected a little bit um, while I've been building all this and everything like. But um, for fifty quid, if you if you've I know I know times are hard for everyone, but if you've got fifty quid to spare, um, I don't think you'll be disappointed with one of these guys. This is a bull nose plane. Um, I've got this on the market. I think I paid like two quid for this and um, this is um, an old record one so the way this blade is fixed is pretty much the same as the shoulder plane pretty much this hasn't got no um, blade adjustment you've pretty much got to either do it by hand or you know give it a little tap with a hammer so at the front where the cutting edge is, you've got about a quarter of an inch um, from the cutting edge to the end of the plane. So this is quite good when you've got to get into corners. Um, you know, if, you, if you're cutting like a rebate, I mean, maybe maybe you're doing some work on a window or you've just got to get into tight quarters. So the benefit with this is that um, usually when you're getting into tight corners, um, you know, you might use something like a... Um, a chisel i think i think everyone just probably grabs for a chisel in those corners but the problem with using a chisel is that when you push sometimes the grain can actually pull the, the cutting edge in or your chisel in and you know you, you'll you'll cut down instead of like going straight across like you, you want to do whereas with this you can actually get quite close to the corner um and then obviously you would still need to finish off with some sort of like, like a chisel or, or something like that um i don't really use it very rarely um it does come in handy sometimes but as i said very rarely um for the sake of two quid um you know it, it was a steal um i don't think i'd go out and buy one of these though um you know if i had to like you know pay like brand new sort of money um i really don't think uh, i haven't really got that much of a need for one of these but it's the same as a couple of these and um, they all handy to have This is a, a spoke um, scraper, kind of the same as a spoke shaver, but a scraper instead. So um, an ex-girlfriend got this for me. Um, I've never used it at all. <laughs> you know, it's a shame because um, it's looking a bit worse for wear now, but uh, when I first got it, it was absolutely beautiful. Um, it's just one of those things. I, do not use it so where i would use that would be um if i was making a stick chair and you've got the spindles um you know and you need to scrape the spindles um obviously being round but what i do i grab for the um the cord scraper and i'll literally turn the spindle in my hand and i'll just scrape it and i've, I've done that with every sort of dowel I've, I've ever done you know it, with concern to making a chair so most you'll know this is obviously a spoke shave um i think this is a stanley there's no markings on it at all now um all the paint has but gone all the, the naming um i think it is a stanley um i think just about everyone's got one of these um it's the same again with these um i don't use it a great deal but you know when i've got need for it it's it's a really good tool to have same as the number four and the number five, I did go out and get an aftermarket blade. So one of the issues with um, a spoke shave, when you're using a spoke shave, you will tend to get a lot of chatter. So again, for those of you that don't know chatter, it'll be like when you're, when you're moving it along the workpiece, you'll get a, like a jutter. Um, and this will this will transfer into the workpiece, so you'll have like a load of like kind of tram lines going across the grain. Um, so to alleviate this, um, you want to keep your the sole well lubricated, easy enough to do. Um, but 
another thing that I've found is that when you're using um, the traditional blades that come with these, is that they're a lot thinner, and it's exactly the same with these. They're a lot thinner, um, and there's, they're able to flex more. So obviously, if they're able to flex more when you're pushing it through the workpiece, I don't know, maybe you hit like a bit of a knot or the grains, like a little bit gnarly, you know, it will create that jutter. Um, so yeah, I noticed a big difference when I changed the blade out. Um, I don't know if this is an hock blade, I can't really see now. I don't know if it's an, um, a hock or a, a Ray Eels one. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, I hope I am. Um, but yeah, really good if you if you're into your woodwork and you haven't got one of these I'd, i would be surprised this is a plow plane this is very very dingy uh, just to kind of oh nearly nearly i nearly dropped this i was nearly buying a new one there <laughs> um just to show you how dingy this thing is um obviously i'm putting it in the palm of my hand um and my hands are quite small so this Again, is a blue band. Yeah, it's a blue band. Number forty-three. Um, again, this is from Workshop Heaven. And this this little guy, um, for it being so small, it packs a hell of a punch. Um, I've built you know several several doors with these. Um, you know to create the grooves for the panels. Um, it's good for uh, to create a rebate. Um, any sort of rebate, I would straight away create with this um, it comes with um, its own uh, wooden fence which is unusual for these um, usually different types of um, you know things like this like the record or a, or a Stanley combination blade they just tend to come with um, the metal fence and it's left to the end the end user to actually um, create um, a wooden fence which isn't a big deal but it's just nice to have, you know, a, f a fence there already. So this has got um, a depth stop here. Pretty cool. Most of these planes have even the wooden ones. Um, this did also come with a, a curfing blade. So you've got a few screws. You put the blade in position, you screw it in. And the purpose of that is for when you re-sawing, um, in practice, I personally think the saw doesn't work well. Um, I'll be honest, I think it's crap, the saw. What I like to do, um, again, this might just be my preference, you know. I like to put like uh, the smallest um, bit in, and I don't know if that's maybe like two millimeters. I, it, looking at it, it's about two millimeters, maybe 2.5 millimeters. And this is what I've done when I had to resaw um, some beach for the aprons. I basically got this guy, got it set up, and um, I, I took, you know, I took a or roller, I made a groove um, on on the two edges. Got me resaw, saw, and just um, you know went down. So with this um, creating the groove, I personally found that it was quicker to use um, a blade rather than to use a saw. Um, logically, when you think about it, the saw blade would be quicker because um, it's got more teeth um, and you're like set and sharpened, you know, to cut with the grain. Uh, but as I said, I find this quicker uh, and that's what I do. If you haven't got a grooving plane, yeah, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this. It's well built. It's it's the machining's beautiful on it. Um, never had an issue with it. Um, definitely recommend it. So this is um, a router plane. Um, this is a Veritas. Um, not fond of it simply because it hasn't got no adjustments um, for the for the blade. Um, I've never, I don't think I've ever used it to be honest, um, I don't even know why I bought it, <laughs> who knows, who knows. Um, if you compare that to the record um, planer, uh, router plane, sorry, um, obviously this is a lot bigger than um, the record, um, this is 
this is a guy I use for everything, um, you know, creating um, tenants, you know, if I, if I need to clean up the cheeks, stuff like that. Um, even housing, this is a guy I go for. Never ever comes into my mind to, you know, go and get this guy. Um, this is probably going to be better suited to get into smaller areas, um, smaller pieces, but as I said, I've never had the need and it's never like occurred to us to, to actually, you know, dig this out. Um, but while I've got this um, record um, router playing out, um, I do like this. I wouldn't be without one. Um, again, this is older than me. I got this off eBay. This was about seventy-five pounds, um, quite a number of years ago now. Um, it did have everything with it. It did have the the depth stock. Uh, for those of you that don't know. There is actually a section in the middle. Um, you put um, your depth stop in there, and you can get repeatable depth depth stop cuts. Um, it does. It did also come with a fence. Um, again, I still got the fence. They're all tucked away, though. I, I never ever use them. Um, it did come with a fence, and I think the fence was kind of geared towards um, maybe grooves or rebates. I'm I'm not overly sure, but. Um, Really, really nice uh, bit of kit. Next up is a Travisher. Um, I still think it's some sort of a plane. Um, you know, there might be people say um, it's not, but I personally class it as a chairmaker's plane. So I got this from a guy or a chairmaker rather who's from the south of England. For the life of us, I can't remember his name. He's a very good chairmaker. I, I, from what I believe, he's been doing it for a lot of years. He also makes tools, and um, this is one of the tools he makes. I got this a number of years ago, um, and this is absolutely awesome for saddling a seat. Um, I've actually got a scope, but I don't use a scope. Um, this, when I set it, when I want it to, will actually hog off a, a ton of material um, when I'm saddling the seat. So, I, as I said, I don't use one of them, I just use this. So when I get a little bit closer with it, um, I just adjust um, the depth of cuts, um, which is done by two screws that go through the body of the wood. Um, these are just hex screws and they apply pressure to the two sections that go through um, the body vertically, uh, which are, this is part of the uh, blade. Um, and basically you would give this a little tap, um, you know, with a hammer, Get your adjustments and um, tighten things up and away you go um, pretty glad i got this um, really good bit of kit um, would definitely recommend it uh, if you kind of um, got some plans to make some chairs in the future and um, made my life a lot easier so i've got some kind of planes here um, i started off with the little guy um just to see if i would kind of get on with it and like it and i did get on with it so i went out and i bought its big brother and this sadly lay in my toolbox for about a year and a half um so there has been a learning curve with this for me personally um for those of you that don't know when you when you get this um, kind of the die, which is the body, the the metal, sorry, the the wooden part, um, it will require you setting it up. So sometimes I think more like nine times out of ten, the bed uh, where the blade sits, um, you will have to um, you know take some material off that to make sure that the the blade is actually sitting flush and comfortable. Um, with the bed the wooden part and on the under side you do have to actually use a, a remove sorry a little bit of material so basically um you won't touch the front you won't touch the back uh, and just in front of the blade i believe i would have to check that again uh, and there is actually like a curve you can't actually see it on camera and um, this is only very slightly and this actually helps with the friction you get very little friction it's actually quite nice to use one of these um you know just for the lack of friction so how you adjust these for people that don't know 
um, obviously you use a hammer um, that's your you can tap down on this a little bit um, obviously your lateral adjustment is going to be um, the two sides again with a hammer if you want to pull the blade back you hit the back of the die um, on the corner and you can actually also um, hit the front corner as well to actually bring the blade forward so setting these I can actually say a little bit better with these um, my eyes are really bad but I think it's more the contrast of the wood and the blade and actually when I'm looking at it now the backdrop of the white um, on the walls in the workshop actually help as well so I'm actually I can't I'm actually able to do that um, and it's the same sort of thing you, you kind of look down um, you look down you see if there's one side that's a bit too much or the other side's a bit too much you would just tap your hammer get it right um, and off you go um, that sounds quite easy doesn't it but um, in practice for me it wasn't that easy it took us quite some time to to be able to um, get it set up right um, and take some nice shavings um, I'm still learning I'm still getting the grips with it but I am starting to use it a lot more so last up um, is it a plane or is it not a plane um, what do you think um, leave a comment let us know if you think it's a plane or it shouldn't be in this uh, video or podcast rather so for those of you that don't know this is a, a cabinet scraper um, it's basically a scraper in a metal body for all intents and purposes it has two thumb screws at the front um, with a bar going across and that bar fixes um, the blade to the body on the other side it has a little thumb screw and what the little thumb screw does is actually it pushes the blade so for anyone that uses um, card scrapers when you're using a card scraper you know that you'll actually you'll bend the blade and um, sometimes more than others it just depends how it's sharpened how long you've been using it and what the grain material is like but sometimes you will have to get quite a bend um, and that's pretty much how um, you get blisters on your thumb um, when you're using um, card scrapers so that's what that little thumb screw at the back is for it actually just bends it or pushes raw as you tighten it it just pushes a little bend into um, into the, the scraper itself and um, the more you the more you um, tighten that um, the more of a shaving you'll get with these uh, I tend to find so the blade itself is not sharpened the same way as a traditional scraper um, so with a traditional scraper um, you'll file this at 90 degrees um, and then you'll burnish it creating like a hook either side so with this this is actually um, filed at 45 degrees then you create your hook these are pretty handy to have around um, it has got us out of um, you know a few tight spots uh, been using material and the material has you know been been really awkward there's been some gnarly grain you've had like you know the great the grain's been swirling it's been going down it's been lifted up um, so with grain like that, um, you know, using a number four sometimes it's just not gonna gonna work. Um, even with a bevel up, sometimes it's just not gonna work. So, you know, nine out of ten, I'll just go and get this guy straight away. Um, it will take you a little bit longer because you can't take as fixed shavings depending on what you're doing. Um, but this is um, literally got us out of a few scrapes. Um, good bit of kit I don't think I'd go out and buy a brand new one and um, same again this was a flea market find I think I paid five pound for this um, so this is a record number 80 um, I'm not sure of its age I've got no idea um, but it works quite well and that's the main thing so guys if you're liking what I'm doing I would appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up and um, subscribe if you're not already subscribed um, check us out on social media um, I'm on Instagram Facebook TikTok I'm pretty active on those um, I think I'm gonna call it for the day because I could be here talking hours about tools 
But yeah, I'm going to call it. So until the next time, I shall say and speak to you guys later.